It's going to do coffee script. Can you hear me? Yeah. And we're going to start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. All right. Hi, I'm Fehan, and uh, this is coffee script. So what is coffee script? Uh, more or less, it's basically syntax sugar for JavaScript. Um, and uh, the, the previous guy was talking about analogies. And uh, I think analogies are a really good way to uh, help you understand uh, what CoffeeScript is about. So if JavaScript is gluten-free haggis pizza, then CoffeeScript is an enchanted tin crust handcrafted by Gandalf. <laughs> so that's one example. Uh, let's see. If JavaScript is a corrupt, lecherous cop, then CoffeeScript is synchronized swimming detective. Uh, that might be a little obscure. <clears throat> All right. If JavaScript is Smog, the evil dragon, then CoffeeScript is an adorable frog-shaped lighter. Um, so I, I went overboard with uh, these analogies. And so they basically just keep going on and on. And um, I'm just going to skip through them because I won't finish at all if I don't just keep going. All right. When, when's this going to? Oh, OK. So I'm, I guess I'm trying to say that CoffeeScript is not terrible. Um, and uh, one reason for that is it, it does borrow from some of the best ideas out there. Uh, for example, Python, JavaScript, Ruby. Uh, that order of influence might be totally fake. Whatever. Um, and uh, let's just look at a simple example. So here we have uh, some multi-line comments. That's really basic. So what I'm implementing here is it's a shuffle function. Um, it's just like what you find in, random, in the random module in the Python standard library. So in, in Python, you just import you know, from random import shuffle. In JavaScript, you have to like, search in the web and copy off someone's code from like Stack Overflow. Uh, here's the main function. So uh, as you can see, it's basically white space limited. And uh, we have actually uh, some array comprehension right here. So it uses parentheses, but um, JavaScript doesn't have generators. So it actually produces an array. And then here, the second line here in the main function, uh, where it says display array, that's actually a function invocation. So it borrows that thing from Ruby where you don't actually need the parentheses to call a function. Um, and then here, I, I do that again. So it's calling the append method on, the, uh, on jQuery. And then here, we have uh, a range, which is also, I think, from Ruby as well. And the thing that tripped me up as I, I was writing this program, if you'll notice, is there's no colon. So like um, for your looping statements, you don't need a colon. And I was like constantly running into that, because I just automatically put a colon in every for loop that I make now. Uh, and then here is the shuffle function. Uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, you'll see that also, I forgot to mention, um, CoffeeScript is very, very terse. There's, there's no def keyword at all. Like The way you define a function is you just have this little arrow keyword, which uh, I don't know, maybe that comes from Haskell. I'm, I don't really, really know. but. Um, I think the reason for that, though, is to avoid you having to write function all the time, which you would do if you were actually writing JavaScript. So I'm not going to explain exactly what this does. It's, it just shuffles the elements, right? Um, here again, you see there's no colon needed for the conditional statement where you, say, where you see uh, f, if i equal equals 0. Um, and there is also uh, what was called destructuring assignment. So right here at the very last line, uh, where I'm swapping the values of array i and array, array j, I don't need the temporary vari variable. <coughs> and you know, obviously, that also comes from Python. Uh, this is the display function. Uh, there's a few other elements here. Uh, not too many new stuff. Oh, here is a multi-line string, right? Where it says style equal, and then you, you also have the triple triple quotes. But here, it's actually a slightly different because um, it actually looks at the indentation. So because all these lines are at the same indentation, in, indentation level, when it actually prints it out, uh, there won't be any. And then the last thing is string interpolation on the very second to last line. So 
Uh, you need double quotes for that, and that's basically from Ruby, I think. Uh, so here's the big weakness of CoffeeScript. Debugging is really shitty. Uh, for kind of obvious reasons, uh, your errors come from the JS file that's generated. It doesn't come from your original coffee, dot .coffee file. However, you can, uh, there's a new feature, newish feature in Chrome. So if you, well, if you follow these instructions, you can enable what's called source maps. And then you can actually, uh, when you look at errors, they point to your actual .coffee file. And also, you can even do debugging inside of Chrome. Uh, so in conclusion, CoffeeScript might not be terrible, maybe. Uh, that's the end. But how much time do I have, Brian? Two minutes. Two minutes? Maybe I'll do a little demo. All right, so here's the program that's running. Right, so it's shuffling. The, the top one is the original array, and the bottom ones are the shuffled results. Uh, and then let us introduce a bug into our program. So uh, like that, for example. Then I can compile it, assuming I still remember how. OK, so I've compiled it. Now I'm going to try running it again. There's going to be an error. And it's going to say, oh, no. And it's going to point to a line in my JavaScript file. And I'm not going to know necessarily, like, where does that come from? I mean, that's line 36. but what is that in my CoffeeScript file? So here's the option that you can enable is you can, you probably can't see this, but I'm just adding a dash M to it. So now if I go to the little gear thing and I scroll down a little bit and I click enable source maps, uh, I think maybe this will work here. Uh, so now when it displays the error, it actually shows me the results inside of my CoffeeScript file, which again is too small for you to actually see. But uh, well, I don't know. Just just believe me, I guess. Um, yes. So if you don't have an error, for example, if I go set the, the breakpoint here, right in my main function as it starts up, it will know to to go there. Although I think Chrome is a little bit wonky. So you have to, whatever, you have to press an extra button press. But yeah, it stops right there. And it actually hasn't hit the error yet. So you can do normal debugging as well. I'm done anyway. Good job, man. Good job. Thanks.